Yvette, thank you so much to accept this invitation with this uh, Medinea uh, meeting. We have now uh, since a few years in different parts of the Mediterranean and always we try to connect with the reality of the place. And, uh, and here in Malta it's quite a magic place. This island completely in the middle of this huge zone and uh, uh, I would like we talk a little bit and you explain a little bit what is your uh, specificity uh, in, in a context where this island, uh, Malta, has its own language, mm -hmm. uh, a language which doesn't exist somewhere else, but it's a mix of, uh, of uh, different influences already. Uh, then the question of language is there even before our question of the music in this place, how to mix the uh, but first, I would like to know if, because the, the sound of your language is so specific, I would like to know if I pronounce well your name. For me, it's Buhajar. Yeah, Buhajar. 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 It's, 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 uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's correct, it's correct. It's, uh, almost there, almost there. <laughs> yeah, because our, our language is, uh, the consonants sometimes follow each other in a way that uh, is um, difficult to, for people coming from uh, uh, languages uh, from Latin where there is, there is uh, a lot of sound of vowels going mm. on in the language. Actually, Malta is the right place to have this project of Medinea because um, uh, since the prehistory, Malta was always the, um, there's always high, hybrid um, population and, and civilization um, coming from across the Mediterranean. So you get all uh, influences and that's why the language um, um, exists only here and with its ethnicity and you have um, influence from the Latin, Roman, Romance, um, from a Romanic language and you have also uh, Arabic and also English. So it's, it's quite a mix, uh, quite a hybrid uh, mm -hmm. kind of, of uh, language. And then you've got the singing. The singing is, we call it Anna. Um, it's uh, pronounced with G H A N E, and the first vowel is elongated because of D G H, which, which doesn't sound in this in this case. Well, Anna, uh, there are three types of Anna. Oh, there are there is the spirit pront, the talfat we call it talfat, and there's also the um, the talbani we call it. So I have to translate this. So when, I ha when I'm talking about spirit pront, it's uh, the extemporized uh, version of, uh, of Anna, where you have two people um, using verbal duel to compose poetry. And this is all happening orally, extemporized, and it's happening there and then. So there's no preparation or rehearsal for this. It's quite um, unique, so to speak, and extemporized as I'm, as I'm saying. And then you have the fat, the, the lament. Fat and lament um, go hand in hand. When we speak of, of fat, means that you are singing about a fact. Fat equals fact. Um, fact, something about, uh, will deal about an event that has happened. Something that has happened in history. It doesn't have to be um, coming from the government or from a great civilization. Even the history of the people. Mostly it is, it is about that. And also there is lament, which is the cousin, so to speak, of Talfat. Lament will normally, the poet, will take one aspect of the contemporary society um, and he or she will write about that, that uh, idea and what he thinks about it, what she thinks about it, and her opinions and the reflections that um, the poet is doing. That is a memorized text. And it can be improvised. It, um, the, the poet can improvise some pieces, but it depends on the, on the atmosphere, on the ambient, on the, also on the um, audience listening. That's lament. That's what we'll be working with. Lament, and in this case, we, I will be t speaking, dealing with the issue of, of pollution, which is a quite um, red flag in our, in our times. And I will be lamenting, I will be um, feeling sorry, so to speak, and showing the audience 
um, my sadness, my about the defects, the things that are happening around us. And then there's Talbanyu. Talbanyu is, um, there are, they are um, stanzas that come traditionally th um, through generation and generation. Normally these are fixed. The Anatal Banyu deals also, um, or pours into, so to speak, Anafiloli. The same text of Anatal Banyu can go into Anafiloli. Now, Anafiloli is the high pitched singing, which is uh, mostly attributed to the female voice. That is also can be um, studied, memorized, or also improvised. It's quite flexible. It, the magic happens between the musician, the poet, and the audience. Anna is, has this phenomena. Even though the text is written, or if it's not written, this, these three elements are always at play. And this is something that I felt happening here, uh, quite magically and phenomenologically, so to speak, because um, the musicians are feeding into this, my sentiments, and then I can mm -hmm. um, uh, deliver. And uh, uh, beautiful, thank you so much for all this uh, uh, knowledge you transmit to us. And uh, I hope uh, through us it will also reach other people. Uh, could you say a few things about uh, your, your personal choice to be involved in a specific, could we say, man area or man field of expression? What is your choice? Why you arrive to that point? This is something, this is my, it's like my Odyssea. <laughs> it's something that I have to delve into because um, there's, there are big question marks and uh, sort of black holes why women are not so involved in this kind of, of, of singing. Um, there are instances, of course, but they are numbered. For example, at one time there were six um, female singers um, deal, um, uh, singing Spirit of Pront, the extemporized version. Um, and then you get once in a while a female playing, um, singing, um, performing. Um, it's still a question mark why there's so much absence. Obviously, one can link to the space. One can link the question, the answer to the space, because Anna normally happens in a, in a very secluded, masculine um, area where they um, where, where men meet after work, and it's a tradition that has, have, has been going on, it's very much like the pub for the, for the English, but uh, in this case, the Anne it will be performing. Um, why am I attracted to this? The sound. Basically, um, I love the sound and the facility of creating poetry orally. So this is what attracts me the most. Um, I've been into uh, other um, areas of uh, disciplines like classic music, folk, um, flamenco, folk um, in, in Ireland. And I've been involved also in, in uh, music from, from Austria. But at the end of the day, I found something that is um, more how should I put it? More me, so to speak. Obviously, in this, in this, in this island, on this island, and I think there's a lot, a lot to be done to experiment with Anna. And this is why I want to thank you for this opportunity to have this experience and uh, experiment with the Anna, with so much, so many musicians mm. from around the the globe, so to speak. <laughs> we thank you. We thank you. Pleasure.